This is a privilege to meet a true Soviet hero, Mr. Yosef Mideleevich. He's a true Soviet hero because this, this, is, this is the person who, we, we talk about gulags a lot. A lot of Americans know the word gulag. They read something about gulag. This is the person who actually spent 11 years, I mean, think about Some it. Some people say survivor. Like survivor. You know, from Holocaust, now a survivor. It is a survivor. No, I mean, absolutely <laughs> to survive. No, no. I mean, maybe it's ridiculous for you, but that, mm -hmm. that actually should tell about your spirit, that the mm -hmm. being behind the no, it's bars good, you know, for 11 It's good for the book. To sell the book, it should be a quote like that. But I'm a normal human being, nothing special. I mean, look, from my personal experience, I was this close mm -hmm. to be behind bars, just like you. Oh. Because uh, I was, uh, at some point, summoned to KGB, Lubyanka headquarters in 1985. Mm -hmm. They were pressuring me to work for them. Mm -hmm. So I was this close. Then I didn't know what it, what it, so what it was like to be in uh, Lubyanka prison. So when I traveled uh, to Hungary mm -hmm. with my sister and my father, and uh, we went down uh, to what used to be uh, their analogy of uh, KGB in, in Hungary. I was shocked to see what it was uh, like to be in there. I just imagined that I don't know how I could have survived that. There were instruments of torture over there. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we were in uh, Berlin, former East Berlin. Yeah. And we were in Stasi prisons. Right. I just couldn't imagine how can anyone survive those conditions. And you were the person who... I was not really tortured. You were not tortured. Yeah. So th this, is, this is one of the things that is kind of curious, because uh, I would think about the, the brutality of uh, the Soviets. Did you experience like any brutality of, uh, on their part? You know, not especially. I learned, uh, explain something. The moment you are being arrested in a big group, mm -hmm. there always is a, a weak point that they can break. And the people start cooperate. Why they uh, use brutality is they feel that they cannot achieve their goal, but uh, they prefer, uh, you know, to achieve uh, the goal easily without brutality. Simply, people being in the prison, knowing that they expect death penalty, start uh, talking, and they mm -hmm. told whatever they would like to uh, know, and even more than they expected. So there was no need to, to torture us. If there is somebody, one person that knows a lot and is not cooperating, certainly they will use uh, like a forcible way, ways of uh, getting the information. In my case, I did know something that I will, wouldn't disclose, but uh, still our uh, case was very known. So they... Um, Maybe that's the reason why... There's another reason. But the first reason still, there is some, uh, from the very beginning, some 16 people were arrested, women. Mm -hmm. Some people start uh, giving evidences where we were arrested in the airport. Some of people, leading people, start talking right there. They got everything and start arresting more people. And the, the moment they arrested some 50 people, they got all the information. So, but, uh, I mean, I introduced to you someone who actually uh, survived the, the, the gulags, 11 years of gulags, but yeah. could you please you know, tell the story of how you ended up? What, what was the reason why you ended up? being uh, in Gulag in the first place. Mm -hmm. This this is the world-renowned story. I strongly recommend reading this book. This is this is the hero, I mean, the true hero. Really admire this gentleman. No, I, so, I don't what, admit what I'm not a hero. <laughs> regular man. Yes, you are, but anyway, that's the, anyway. Way, that's the way I look at it. See, well, there were two main uh, trends in uh, my activity in uh, that of uh, my group. The first is uh, Jewish education. It was illegal. When, when was it to start? With? It was, and uh, we started like uh, 1966, mm -hmm. and then I was arrested in 1970, so more than four years. Uh, Jewish education was illegal in Soviet Russia, it simply wouldn't exist. So our way was uh, to uh, teach other people, and it was considered illegal and I criminal. Know. We I could know. be arrested for that. Think about it. In USSR, they would put you behind bars for just studying a foreign language. It's okay to study French or Spanish or German, but God As forbid... Well, Jewish history. But God forbid yeah. you start learning Hebrew... Jewish history. Or Jewish history. And the Jewish tradition. It's anti-Soviet activities. I got for that seven years. 
selling you. So Silveros on top. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. So go ahead. I'm sorry. And so it was uh, for the beginning. It was um, a main trend, and later on we come to understanding that we can do it. You know, we had this, that time there was more than three million Jews in Soviet Russia, and you can't educate them uh, illegally. You know, can reach out for maybe. A thousand, two thousand, but what about hundreds of thousands? So it became obvious that uh, the only way is just to open the gates and let our people go. For that time, well, no free immigration. And I, I repeatedly telling the story when I come to this specific office in, um, um, in um, asking for permission to leave. Ovir. Ovir, so uh -huh. called that. Uh, Which is the department office, yeah, of visas. Giving permissions. Uh, which I was uh, aware that nothing will, would be given, but still, you know, at least to uh, declare that I am willing to live. In beforehand, we got an uh, invitation from Israel. You can't simply, couldn't simply apply by by yourself. You 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 needed to have a, a relative that would write you that he is willing to like uh, unite the family that was um, split during uh, the Holocaust, and then. Uh, you would come to Israel Foreign Ministry, and they will issue and uh, permission to invite me. So, in other words, in other words, a very complex procedure. They say, and it was the phrase coined by Churchill, the Iron Curtain. In the Soviet Constitution, you had all the rights. Oh, you yeah. have the freedom of speech, you have freedom of expression, you have the freedom of immigration. Right. But there's uh, there's a, a Russian sort of sort of joke where they say that. Uh, uh, okay, do you have the right? Yes, you do. But can you? No, you can't. No, you, you, to, to use your right, you have to get our permission. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall decide whether to give you uh, or not. Which, uh, in fact, they would never. They would never, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, so in other words, uh, your idea was uh, simply... Freedom of immigration. Freedom of immigration. Not only for uh, myself, uh, for all my people, for the nation. So the government denied you your actual constitutional right yeah. to emigrate uh, from the... Again, they would never admit that uh, it's denied. You just uh, the procedure. You have to apply and they will uh, decide. And then uh, if uh, that would positive each year at time, some maybe 100 people would get permission to emigrate. Yeah. Out, out of uh, hundreds of millions. You know. So, since it, they didn't allow you to emigrate, you decided to do what? Yeah, I what decided um, to try to escape illegally. For we were aware that in the Declaration of Human Rights of UN is written that the basic uh, right of everybody is a freedom of uh, movement. movement. Correct. And if it is restricted, a human being is um, uh, eligible to fight for his freedom. Mm -hmm. So we, we, are, we, we felt that we are following exactly the spirit of the Declaration of Human Rights. If right. somebody is suppressing your human rights, you have the all rights to fight against it. Mm -hmm. So our way to fight was just to escape illegally mm -hmm. from Soviet Russia. And as far as uh, the borders were heavily guarded, the only way was to try to uh, run away using uh, their vehicle. At the beginning, we looked for a way just to steal an uh, airplane. For yeah. our, our main uh, uh, ma main uh, task was to publicize uh, our case, not specifically to f uh, to run away ourselves, which was uh, as, as well good. Uh -huh. But the main uh, idea was to uh -huh. publicize and uh, dramatize uh -huh. the situation. So that to seen bring attention of the world of public opinion to, to the plight of uh, the so the jury so specifically the jury. and generally for every uh, uh -huh. citizen. citizen. Yeah. Right, right. So we felt that even if you would be arrested or even better killed, now it will <laughs> really, really dramatize. You know that people wait for. Uh, we left uh, like a written uh, um, uh, statement telling the, the reasons. In a, in a case they would be killed or arrested, nobody would know what really was our aim. Our friends keeping uh, in secret this kind of statement would publicize it and showing and telling that the real reason for us was the freedom, the fight for uh, human rights, for freedom of uh, movement, specifically of a uh, Jewish nation. So let me try to process it. How old were you? At the time? I was uh, 22. At 22, what you said, you were willing to sacrifice your life Sacrifice, you said, it was, it was normal, you know. Sacrifice your life 
But otherwise, there is no way to uh, to become a free. You know, yeah, they, if you are not ready to sacrifice, you yeah, will be a slave. You're not a hero. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, no, it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. I believe that uh, a lot of Russian, Jews, oh, a, a lot of Soviet citizens would do the same. Nah, but the situation not. was bad. You know? Absolutely not. And that's that's the sad part yeah. of it. But anyway, so so the idea was not only to hijack the plane. But yeah. also to make it sure that the rest yeah. of the world uh, mm -hmm. would know about it. Yeah. And uh, the original I, plan was to land in Sweden and mm -hmm. have a press conference. Mm -hmm. They're on the spot in the airport, mm -hmm. and then you know whatever they would arrest us, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not just not giving away. Our we could uh, land in Finland for it was very close to Saint Petersburg, but we did know, and Eduard Kuznetsov, that was one of the leaders of our group. Uh, already spent uh, seven years in prison for anti-Soviet uh, propaganda, and he did know he met fa defectors mm -hmm. that escaped to Finland, and there was an, a treaty between Russia and free, uh, Finland to give away any refugee without checking the reason. Uh -huh. So they had no Finish way. Shame on Finland! Shame! Shame on them! But anyway, mm -hmm. so I mean, this, this is this is a fascinating story. I mean, the details of the story of the hijacking uh, you can read in this book. Or other books. Not only the hijacking, movie. the main part is being in a really in a compulsory labor camp. Uh -huh. The way of life, the every day. So that's what something, if you don't mind, uh, I would like uh, to pick your brain about. I mean, like I said, to me it's just incomprehensible to be in a situation where you're locked in essentially four, four walls with no freedoms. I mean, how did it work? It was, it was slave labor essentially. No, there are different. No? Uh, 